Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready for more propaganda? Well, you're in the wrong place at the right time. Colombo Chronicles is for critical thinkers. Let's welcome the consumer advocate for justice. Here's the Rose. Rose Colombo. Hey everyone, it's the Rose. Rose Colombo right here for you every Wednesday. God willing, as I always say, it is noon here on the West Coast. It is a beautiful day here. And of course, we're still keeping everyone in prayer who has suffered from the so-called natural disasters around the world and especially over in Maui and Lahaina. So some people pronounce it Lahaina. Whichever, they're all in our prayers and we will not forget them and we have not forgotten them. And uh, we definitely hope that the government steps in and helps these people get back on their feet because $700, you can't even rent a Cloud9 motel room, I don't think, for $700 if you, I haven't stayed in one, but if you ever have, that was a joke back then, um, the Cloud9. But anyway, let's uh, talk about what is happening in our world today. Uh, national security, cyber security. Is there really any security? Uh, how do we know if we are secure? We do not know that, do we? Because life is like throwing the dice when we make choices in some instances. And um, sometimes uh, it's like being in a casino where the cards are all stacked against you and in favor of the house. Well, that's how it feels today. It feels like the House is the big federal government who was granted limited limited authority uh, under the United States Constitution, but it now has a giant Bigfoot on everyone's neck, it appears. And people are very, very concerned about their privacy, about their homes being their secure castles where they can relax and feel safe. Uh, But then again, there's those unexpected and and non-warrant searches uh, knocking on the door for even innocent people today. So a lot of things have changed when it comes to security and freedom of speech and freedom of will and freedom of choice granted by God naturally not by elected officials who interpret the Constitution the way they personally want to interpret it for political, personal, or financial gain, whatever it happens to be. Because we know the government is heavily tied to uh, members of the New World Order who happen to be CEOs, not all CEOs, But the CEOs who are involved in this new world order, one world government takeover of you, your kids, your property, your bank accounts, your change, if there's any left when they're done with you, because Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum stated from his own lips, which I watched, that he is God, his members are God. (laughs) Sorry, but that's funny to me (laughs) because they're all going to find out differently in the end. No one lives forever. And that you will own nothing and you will be happy, which we are witnessing from the excessive wildfires that have been recurring since 2009 when you may have forgotten that social media used to used to uh, post the threats by foreign enemy nations who had criminal groups of people who threatened to burn down America. And they were all over the internet and they said they were here and that's what they would. There's a lot of different factors where we could 
we could ponder is if those groups that said they were here and would burn down America because they're anti-American and their stated and written goal is to uh, enter the USA, overpopulate and dominate the United States of America and reduce the population of the natural born Americans, which is done through many different agendas that they are imposing through Planned Parenthood, through same-sex indoctrination of little children and genital mutilation of children uh, and many, many more uh, programs that they have uh, inserted into the public school, which I believe, in my opinion, is indoctrination. And so we're going to talk about um, cybersecurity and uh, get on a few other interesting topics that are affecting our life today, our nation, and our constitutional freedom, liberty, rights, and sovereignty. And today we have a very special returning guest. His name is H. Michael Hervey, and he is a corporate and technical writer who lives in California. He's also the past chairman of the Conservative Party in the United States of America, and he has a growing blog website um, that he will tell you about. And also, I'm going to give you more information about him as soon as we come back from this important message and touch on these important topics that are affecting everyone's life, not only in America, but worldwide. And that is very, very serious to your privacy, to your children's privacy, to your home, private, to the privacy you have in your own home, if there is any, uh, in the public schools, in public places, and and with all the cameras that are recording everything we do, and then the clips uh, showing up on social media, uh, people are making decisions from a clip, not knowing the beginning of the video clip or the ending of the video clip, but yes, the sensationalism. So we're going to talk about all of that in just a moment. But if you are also concerned about the survival of humanity worldwide, then you need to read a very special political satire that is an international Irwin Award winner, five-star review that critics say will leave you very concerned about our survival, free will, free choice, and humanity. Obamasaurus, the new book by Rose M. Colombo, is an updated version of a political satire that reflects the political roadmap of today's world, written with an Orwellian twist. Will humanity survive or suffer depopulation or extinction? Obamasaurus by Rose M. Colombo, available at Amazon.com. The Justice Club is back on Colombo Chronicles live podcast. Join Rose Colombo at noon and find out what tips she will provide in a world of little justice. Colombo Chronicles Live. Colombo is on their trail. Listen up at Colombo Chronicles Live. Okay, listen up because we are going to join the Justice Club today. We're going to enter into the world of justice or no justice, whichever you uh, perceive it, because justice is in the eye of the beholder. What you think is just, I may not think is just. And what I think is just, you may think is unjust. So it really is in the eye of the beholder. And as a longtime consultant to victims of legal abuse, helping them become survivors around this nation uh, who were giving up, some wanted to commit suicide, believe it or not, save their lives and let them know there's life after divorce and there's life after injustices, life after legal abuses, but you can't give up, never give up, fight back for justice. And that is the important thing. But you also need to know when to let go and move on because the justice system has unbountiful wealth of your taxes to fight back against you. So things to think about. So watch for my upcoming book, probably late October 2023, version two, Fight Back Legal Abuse 2. The first version in 2010 went viral, global. So you won't want to miss Fight Back Legal Abuse 2. 
So let's get started and let me tell you about uh, H. Michael Hervey, and he is a returning guest. So we're very fortunate to have him back. He has a wealth of information, and he has helped startup businesses, large businesses, and he's in marketing, effective corporation communications, business plans, dynamic PowerPoint presentations, press releases, uh, web content, speeches, memorable ad copy, and first-rate editing proofreading if you need someone. Um, he has a long-time experience in the enterprise of software, consumer, consumer aerospace, and wireless industries. Uh, he gained exceptional interpersonal communication and technical writing skills, and he has well-traveled internationally. He is a road warrior. He wrote seven e-books on travel, business, crypto, blockchain, and a cornucopia of business Markholm articles. He is a graduate of Penn State University with a BA in political science. He worked in Wall Street uh, Bank and before setting off on a life of discovery. He joined the United States Marines, attained the rank of captain, and served as a fixed wing and helicopter pilot where he soared the skies of blue and touched the face of God. So let's enter into that world of justice and versus no justice and find out uh, what uh, H. Michael Hervey has to say about cybersecurity today and some other little topics we'll touch on. Hi, uh, Michael. How are you today? Well, hello, Rose. I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for allowing me to come on your wonderful show. Oh, you're so welcome, and we're so happy to have you back because there's so many things that um, have been recurring day by day by day since we last talked that it's hard to keep up with everything that's happening to our country and to us and to our Constitution, our sovereignty, and uh, around the world especially since we're global, and that makes it even more difficult for people to keep up with what is happening uh, with the social media, the Internet, um, cybersecurity, and I know you have a lot of information about that and um, are an expert in that area. So I kind of, I hope you don't mind if we start off at least with touching on cybersecurity because and the internet and social media because um, I was on Facebook for 12 years. I was headed up to 700,000 fans on Facebook who liked what I was posting until 2019 when I happened to mention my research about the issue back then. We can't talk about it on social media because freedom of speech doesn't exist when it comes to that topic. So you know what I'm talking about. The world knows what I'm talking about because it affected the world. And it was at that point, after 12 years and being headed to a million people uh, who liked what I was posting and following me, they totally wiped out my total account. And, uh, and I had been tracking and keeping information on for an entire year on my friends who had been suspended or wiped off the Facebook account. And uh, they were most, well, they were all conservative, and uh, all of them. And I sent it to Congress, too. I sent that report to Congress to three different senators and also to William Barr, but never heard from them about it. And it was a lot of work and very expensive and time-consuming to put together. So I was very concerned that they were accusing me personally, whoever these fat, fat not fat, but fat checkers are, um, who called it um, hate speech. And uh, it, it wasn't hate speech because I don't hate anyone. So this is what was happening to a lot of people who, Opposed their agenda since 2019, and then um, Twitter just or, or X, whatever it is now, just uh, shadow banned one of my posts because I mentioned the word liberal, and 
state says that was hate conduct. So, of course, I appealed that and defended myself. I don't hate anyone. And where is there evidence or proof or intent that I am, uh, you know, that I posted a hate conduct tweet? My point is, um, Michael, is that they are accusing people who are natural-born Americans in this country, in this country, who are just, who are just uh, expressing their opinions on what they are seeing and witnessing and experiencing in America today, who have lived the American life, who um, who understand the United States Constitution and what freedom of speech is, freedom of press, freedom of um, expression, freedom to assemble and freedom to protest and so forth. It is very concerning to me and to these conservatives that the United States government has allowed Wall Street CEOs to control and to to um, to allow the FBI to influence what they post as well, allegedly influence social media from what I heard during the Senate hearings on this um, on these issues and of social media censoring. So I am very concerned about our freedom of speech, freedom of press, because that, if it is controlled and censored, is no different than a third world country who denies and suppresses freedom of speech in their countries and punishes citizens for speaking out or expressing their opinions. Uh, Can you please elaborate on those issues? I would like to hear your opinion. Sure. Uh, again, thanks for letting me come on. You know, uh, there are a lot of things that we have to talk about that's been going on in America since we uh, last spoke, a lot of things. And, of course, we're going to solve all those problems today while we're speaking. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, speci- yeah. <laughs> Specifically, I, uh, you, you made a very important point about high-tech censorship, and I wrote an editorial about that very same thing where I say that um, the high-tech censorship that Facebook, Twitter used to, and other high-tech companies, that uh, Apple uh, Play and all those other thing, uh, co- companies uh, who are control a lot of speech, TikTok, um, uh, you, know, fa- you know, all those things um, are, are very bad because they, in, in effect, are acting extra constitutionally, but sadly, because they are private companies, they are in fact allowed to censure people because they are not the government. They are not First Amendment violators because they are not the government, and the government First Amendment specifically addresses the federal government. However, because they are um, in effect acting as a de facto government, people need to be totally aware that they're acting improperly and and uh, immorally by censoring Americans free speech while they may not be constitutionally um violating the you know and and wrong they are morally and ethically wrong uh, because the fact is today you cannot do business in the world or especially the United States without using high-tech platforms like Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, Google, all those people. Uh, and because of that, they are, in fact, de facto government. Um, you know, the founders never heard of the Internet, uh, but they were worried about the federal government squelching speech. But the current mode of the, um, the, the high-tech censorship is, in fact, acting like the government because we can't do business without Google, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and all those other high-tech platforms. I can do gov- I can do business, start a business and run a business without federal government. You know, ask all the restaurant owners out there and all the other supply chain uh, out there that run companies without the federal government. But you can't run a business without Twitter, without Facebook, um, without Google today. And so these guys who are censoring us uh, can cause, if they're not capable, ca- uh, careful, 
they can cause a revolution because one of the things that Twitter and Facebook and all the other uh, high tech platforms was allowed for conservatives to vent and to express ourselves uh, and con- and you know and to condemn and and uh, criticize a federal government, but without those avenues of expression, all of our um, expression is squelched, and the pressure that will build without their ability to 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 speak openly and freely and express ourselves. Uh, means that we don't have a relief valve, and they are, you know, a pressure relief valve. It means the pressure will build slowly but surely, and that's how revolutions are formed. That's how revolutions start, because the people don't feel there is a way for them to express themselves that nobody's listening. And when Google and all the high-tech platforms squelch our conservative points of view, that stops the pressure relief. Now, obviously, no one's involved. No one suggests that we should um, uh, have a revolution, but there are elements in American society who are a lot more, uh, you know, violent prone than you or I, or most other, you know, reasonable people, who, when they don't have a way, an avenue to express themselves, can turn to violence, um, and we need to make sure that people don't. Uh, who have a grievance, who have an expression, who have a point of view that's different than the colleges, university, and the leftists out there have the ability to, to do so. And uh, you're exactly right. Google and all the other high-tech platforms are, in fact, um, causing a lot of dis- dis- discern and consternation among co- conservatives. Liberals have all the platform in the world. They have all the news. They have all the radio. They have all the uh, – Facebook, they have television, they have the colleges, the university, they have everything. You know, uh, we have only Fox News uh, and our ability to speak, and of course, the Rose Colombo show. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've even uh, censored a couple of my posts on YouTube because uh, I don't yeah. know why. I mean, I just didn't like the the content, I guess, or the title or whatever. So I have to be really careful because I love YouTube, I love watching the videos. And I like posting my shows on there now. It's a new channel on YouTube. You just put Columbo Chronicles in the search box and it'll pop up the, the shows, which I appreciate them doing that, you know. But still, you're somewhat censored, too. But um, but you have to go with the flow. What can you do? And um, to get any of your information out. And so my point is, though, that they do trample on the Constitution because, and they do influence because if you only have one side being heard and promoted, you never see the other side of the soul. And that is, that is influence and power when they do that. And so uh, when they donate to political parties, huge six, seven figure numbers, which they've done, and they also donate to candidates. That is stepping over the line from being, in my opinion, from being a private uh, entity, corporation, into political influence and indoctrination of of the world. Uh, yeah, and, and you're and you're and you're right about that because they, in fact, are like a de facto government because they're so powerful. Because, as I mentioned. We cannot do business and conduct our normal lives in America without high-tech platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Google. And so they are like, in fact, almost like a government. So while they may not constitutionally be violating, they are certainly morally and ethically doing so in violation. The spirit, they are violating the spirit of the First Amendment. Yes, that's beautiful. And you know, Michael... Our constitutional laws were written and rooted from the Bible and the Ten Commandments and by mostly God-fearing men and uh, who were trying to protect us from this very thing of being suppressed, oppressed, and depressed, as I call fraud, um, in third world nations where they'll just drag you out of your house if you do anything wrong like they did in World War II as well. They don't like you. They target you. I really, really oppose any CEO who allows their fact checker employees who probably 
aren't even natural born Americans and maybe, um, you know, uneducated in birth in our culture of freedom of speech when they came here. So they have their own ideologies from their birth and their homeland. Which I think we have to be very careful that when you come to America, it also requires you to assimilate and the priority language is English. And everybody asks, do you speak Italian? Do you speak Spanish? Do you speak Persian? Why? Why do I need to do any of that? You're in America. I've lived in America, spoken English all of my life. Used to know some Italian, some Spanish and all that and stuff. But my key is I go to the mall or somewhere and into a specific store and there's so many languages going on. I feel like uh, we've gone back to ancient times where uh, Babel happened. And so uh, I'm like, God, are we even in America anymore? I mean, they, you know, I, I truly believe that uh, when when we have allowed um, Wall Street to and Silicon Valley to take over freedom of speech and they are buying up the farmland across America and turning natural foods into lab meat and lab GMO non-nutritional foods and that means they can control a famine, they can control I mean we have to look at the big picture here they can control they control the food and the water rights, which is a crime against the American people because on the books in the federal law, the government is to protect the farmland, the food supply, and the farmers and the water rights uh, for the American people because the American people own their homeland and own those rights. And just because they trampled on the Native American Indians and stole their land, their farmland, their water rights, they're doing it now to the natural-born American farmers and uh, ranchers, and they're targeting the animals, the cows, the chickens, the pigs, the horses. And this is a, in the food plants where they've all burned down. Uh, not all of them, but a lot of them have burned down. Farms have burned down. 19,000 cows were burned down. Somehow, I right. don't know how. All of these things are happening, Rose, you, and you can destroy an entire an entire island. Um, I find this to be, and the, and these guys own mansions on those islands. I find this extremely concerning. So, Rose, I think uh, you have a point about these U.S. corporations buying up too much farmland and controlling a lot of our food supplies. But of an even bigger concern is that when Chinese-backed companies buy American farmland, and especially American farmland near U.S. military bases, and, of course, companies like the Smithfield, which is the biggest pork producer in America, is owned by a Chinese company, that's an even more concern because while American companies can be influenced uh, through stock manipulation, stock attack, you know, legal uh, recourses, we have less influence on Chinese-owned lands, and we have to really be careful because China is our, you know, obviously growing national threat to America, and they have no inhibitions about using every means at their disposal, legal and extra-legal, to gain control and to harm America. And we have to be more vigilant than ever about the Chinese owning American lands and corporations. Well, we have we have the open borders, the open ports, and it has been going on mm. over 40 years, especially starting with the Clintons. Uh, and and we have the um, uh, the open airstrips, and we have millions. I, I predicted in 2021 when I got kicked off of Facebook that the media was lying about there's only 12 million illegals in our country. I said, no, there has to be at least 30 million by now. And then Stanford came out with a, uh, with a study and, po- po- and posted it on Facebook and said, it, said their study that they had been doing uh, 
came up with 29.5 million illegals in the USA. Then we had all the caravans of 10,000 each coming from all over the world, Africa, Afghanistan, you name it, all over the world. These are poor people. God bless them. But how many people can the American people afford to feed, house, uh, provide health care, pay for their uh, their births because they overpopulate, because they don't take contraceptives, they don't go to Planned Parenthood. They believe in large families. And so here in America, they told us not to have more than two kids. Well, and then if you are pregnant, go to Planned Parenthood. So um, that's a depopulation program. While they are overpopulating our country with collectivism from all over the world, and um, through these open borders, not just here, but it's also in Europe, which started in 2009 to accelerate. And so here we are uh, with traffickers, spies, Chinese spies, uh, Pakistani spies, uh, and we have, um, we have fentanyl coming in from China, tons of fentanyl. We have them coming into our ports for 25 years or 30 years. They're free, uh, and and they were they were uh, smuggling in uh, AK-47 and contraband, and uh, then when they got caught, they threatened to blow up the Los Angeles port. Yes. And, Los Angeles port. and so we've had so many threats from China, Michael, that how is it not high crime to allow a foreign enemy nation? to enter our international waterways and to take our manufacturing companies, our intellectual property, products that were made in the USA and our jobs, and give them to a foreign enemy nation who seeks to conquer America and is now planning to take over the economic system and devalue our U.S. dollar. Because uh, the the reason why we're allowing this to happen, to give China an upper hand on America and to allow the invasion of America through our southern borders, it's by design, Rose. Uh, there are the leftists and anti-Americans who run America, who have influenced America, allow these things because they want to, de- to destroy America from within, and they're giving... Uh, China, the upper hand, uh, Trump was the first president in my memory to have the courage, the political will to stand up to China because he understood what they were trying to do. The Democrats and the liberals, however, rejected Trump because they hate Trump, and therefore they rejected everything that Trump had to say uh, that was true about China uh, because of ideology. They would rather call uh, support China than Trump. This is how much they hated Trump. Well, Trump was recognizing and obviously telling the truth about China, who they were stealing our intellectual property. China was allowing uh, dumping goods into our nation, hurting American businesses. They allowed, uh, sent tons of uh, fentanyl precursors to Mexico that allows Mexico to import and and smuggle in fentanyl to hurt our country. And uh, they, they, uh, basically surrounded us with um, with the, the road, the Silk Road initiatives where they took to, uh, made uh, foreign countries, our neighbors in South America, dependent upon China. They infiltrated our spies, our military, our think tanks. Um, and every month we find, uh, we find another China person uh, guilty of spying for China in our military and our um, defense contractors. It's crazy. And the idea that we're allowing foreign invasion of our southern border is on purpose because they want people, Democrats and liberals, I'm sorry, I use the word liberals, Democrats and leftists, want to allow America to be invaded by hordes of people, armies, swarms of people who have no connection to our Constitution, have no connection to our history, our shared values, and of course, uh, these things will harbor terrible history for America down the road when these people become 
eventually citizens vote, spend their money, send their money overseas, where you have a population or a growing segment of our population that has no connection to our shared history and constitution, it's for one purpose, to degrade our nation and to, you know, to uh, um, undermine the constitution. And that is all done by design. Sadly. Well, the Communist Manifesto is to destroy morality and to, uh, first, destroy America's morality and to, um, and, and to, and to smuggle in those drugs uh, and the communist leaders, not the people. I'm not talking about the citizens. I love the Chinese people. They're very, I, I, feel, I feel for them being under such oppression. And oppression and depression. That's why they try to come to America, everybody. But um, they see the threat too. They want to be free. And um, but I'm talking about the leaders who are, are the communist leaders, the business leaders who are uh, under the communist control. And they are um, the the morality. If you destroy America's morality, and uh, you know, and start with the youth which they're doing and through the publics and colleges. And you suppress their speech and their knowledge of what the real America was all about and the Constitution. And you have a president who said the Constitution is meaningless. Congress is meaningless. I had a message for them. The message I gave on my show uh, at that time was, if you agree and stood up and applauded and didn't access the room during that speech, then you are complicit with destroying America. And you cannot have two masters. You cannot be a master to the United States Constitution. You cannot be loyal to the United States Constitution and to the New World Order. You have to get off the fence and decide which master you are going to be loyal to. And if you're going to be loyal to the New World Order, you are no longer loyal to the United States Constitution and Bill of Rights, which is a part of the United States Constitution, meaning you no longer have a job because you don't believe uh, that the Constitution is the supreme laws of the land that defines the three branches of government. So you may as well just resign and go get a job with the New World Order because you are out of a job if you do not keep your sworn oath or do not swear it with honesty right. and clean hands to uphold, defend, protect, and preserve the United States of America and the sovereignty of this great republic. We are not a democracy. We are a republic that is supposed to operate under the rule of law. And that's how I feel about it, that they're putting themselves out of a job if they allow the communists or any other foreign enemy to bring their ideologies, their manifestos, and suppress, oppress, and depress the United States of America and create food shortages, water shortages, energy shortages, and skyrocket our cost of living and force us to pay for the yes. living. Yes, but you have to, you have to, under, you have to understand that the, Chi- the Chinese... The Chinese are masters at corruption. They know how to use money, cash, um, and you know how they know how America works. And they are masters at manipulating people uh, and to pay them and to suborn American policy with cash payments. They know how to find people who need money, and they use money in that way, and they're good at it. Um, and they use America's legal system. Uh, against our, our, um, ourselves uh, to corrupt people and to pay them off and to make them work sometimes wittingly uh, and sometimes unwittingly in their favor and against America. Um, it's a shame because you see it all the time. And the other thing they use to uh, insulate themselves from attack is racism. The Chinese know that Democrats and le- and the uh, leftists are very sensitive to being called racist. And every time a, a Chinese person or a Chinese national gets arrested for spying uh, or they investigate Chinese activity undermining or spying or stealing intellectual property, uh, they always use the word racism 
Democrats react to that positively, and they stop and they, you know, they, they stop dead, dead in their tracks. And of course, Republicans are less inclined to do that, but Republicans are afraid to be called racists, and therefore they're less inclined to act quickly. Democrats stop automatically. So money and the term racism is how the Chinese undermine and suborn America constantly. And and the thing is that um, we do have Chinese spies and we do have congressmen that sleep with the honeypots and the Chinese spies. And (laughs) And they're not even good looking spies. Just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> they were good. If, they were, if that honey pot was at least good looking, I could imagine. But she was not, uh, you know, worthy of a spy. And it was obviously. And 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 the FBI told that guy Clawwell, he's up here in Northern California. Hey, you're. She's a spy. He, he has continued to have a relationship with her. It's disgraceful. Oh, it is so disgraceful. And the thing is, though, I mean, these are the things they tempt them with, you know, because they actually. Uh, they actually force young girls to believe that this is a benefit to them to be chosen to be one of those. And it's so sad. It's so pathetic. I mean, it's, people have no idea how evil it is. And, um, I mean, it is evil. They're, they're getting and better so, at it. They're becoming, they're becoming aware of this more and more. Trump started it, um, and, but, but the media and the Democrats rejected the truth because it was Trump. I think Trump said they automatically were against. But now that Biden is to become aware, now that other Democrats are aware of it, uh, the media and the Democrats are less inclined to reject the truth. And that part is good. They're recognizing China for what it is. I personally would like to see both parties come together and save our country. Um, I don't care about parties. I care about Remembering that you, if you are a natural born American, that you need to think about your children. Do you want them to grow up with freedom, liberty, rights, and a sovereign nation with people you can identify and people who have came here legally and who wanted to be here, want to be Americans, want to uphold the Constitution and assimilate and speak English and uh in public, I don't care what you do in your home or stuff, but in public, I mean, because we don't know what they're saying and what they're talking about. And they could be bad dudes, you know, because when, if nobody remembers, I guess, 9-11 and how they were calling alerts in all the malls, by the bridges, by the dams that were breaking, that were that were uh, a threat to be blown up in, in entertainment centers where there are a lot of people. If you see anybody leaving a, a suitcase by itself or men together holding suitcases or briefcases or whatever, backpacks, be very aware. I mean, they even had, um, even had for the employees of malls, they even had um, exercises, you know, just in case there's a threat or they thought somebody was a threat. All of that went by the wayside. Remember the color codes, the red, yellow, green, yes. whatever they were. <laughs> Remember all that? It's all gone by the wayside. They opened up the borders and said, everybody come in. We don't care who you are. We're well, not, not going to get you. Only, Demo- oh. only Democrats, uh, the media, uh, support that. The, the American people are, uh, have it never supported. And the idea that the Governor Abbott and many of the southern border are shipping these illegal aliens to New York City, Chicago, uh, is uh, just desserts. And the people in those cities are finding out the consequences of being a sanctuary city and uh, are turning against allowing this wave of illegal aliens to swamp our country. And, of course, I think that will um, help turn the tide against this idea of people being allowed to come in. And, and that's my point, Michael, is that freedom of speech has to be freedom of speech. We cannot have Wall Street uh, in, uh, you know, spending money for political agenda. For I mean, if they're going to be a corporation who's concerned about speech, then if they should report it to the law enforcement. If they think you're a, you're dangerous, you're violent, you're posted. They should not be policing us or accusing us of crimes when it's just an opinion or a statement of fact on, and they don't yes. see it. I find that very dangerous because anything that we hate from uh, in front of it is on the computer, 
and it's documented, and that's an accusation, a false accusation many times, and they are not law enforcers that have determined that that was a hate crime or hate conduct. Do you see what yes. I'm saying? You, uh, absolutely. You're, you're hitting on the, the, the key. The note is woke corporations are acting uh, uh, according to a woke and CRT agenda um, that is uh, being – uh, the woke virus that are being affected by the woke virus only allowing certain types of speech to be printed or employees will only say certain kinds of speech. And I think that um, um, you, when you wrote your book back uh, 2013 about the uh, Obama stories and the, how DNA, uh, people walking around as zombies, uh, that was a precursor, by the way, you didn't know it at the time, that was a precursor to uh, wokeism. The where liberals, uh, where the Democrats or the leftists and socialists have totally infiltrated our colleges and university, outflanked uh, traditional Americans who support the, this country, patriotic Americans who support this country, and have totally taken over uh, colleges, university, and grade school, created these woke zombies that traverse around the nation now, acting like corporations and HR departments. Um, and these woke zombies are American tragedies, uh, and many of these corporations are acting in accordance with woke wokeism, critical race theories, um, and that are and the, the the only good news, the only silver lining lining in the COVID uh, pandemic was that parents got to see with their children being taught, and as a result, there's a backlash going on, and the, the backlash against CRT and wokeism in schools. Uh, and CRT and wokeism is in corporations a little bit more difficult, like Disney. But the idea is that Americans are finally waking up and trying to fight the woke virus that you first identified in your book, Obamasaurus. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I've been uh, on the front lines for 30 years, and um, I started out with uh, Women Fight Back Against Legal Injustice and Expose Corruption and Orange County courts, and uh, it was uh, became a target because I was naive and innocent and didn't realize that if you told the truth, even back then, <laughs> you know, we need these changes that so many people... I gave people, you a shameless uh, plug. That's right. <laughs> it was a, quite a journey I've had. <laughs> As you have. So I learned a lot firsthand about, um, about the corruption and justices and and I created an AM, FM radio show. I went to school, learned about producing on uh, cable before it became so huge, and probably produced the first reality show uh, with victims of legal abuse telling their stories and inviting politicians and uh, community leaders and lawyers to say, what are we going to do about this? This is really true story. I documented her, her record. This is true. What are we going to do about it? You know? Well, <clears throat> There were changes made, but you know what I found out? I found out that they ignore the laws, they rewrite the laws, they make people think, okay, we changed the law, everything's great, uh, and they violate the laws. I mean, they they never stop. You can stop a rat, but you can't stop the bigger rat around the corner from taking over. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so it, it, it turned out to be... A, a fact, um, there's always going to be corruption, but I think my point is that as long as you're standing on the front lines and you're telling the truth, you can push it back. You can push it back so that the country remains free and there's freedom, liberty, and, and not taken over by a foreign enemy nation. Um, we have a Let's see if we can get this question in here or comment. I think somebody wants to comment. Hold on. Hi, caller. What's your name? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Wrong number. <laughs> okay. Wrong number. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some people get shy when you when they want to ask a question or comment. Uh, so I guess you changed your mind. So anyway, um, there's an article, Michael, that says Meta discovers wide online propaganda 
pray that one. Hold on. Sorry. I turned that down, but it didn't go down. So anyway, there's an article in the Sun newspaper, and it says, Meta discovers white online propaganda network led by communist China. This is brand new. And it says an analysis by Facebook's parent company, Meta, says a year-long influence campaign led by covert users with ties to the authoritarian regime in China peddled anti-American and pro-Chinese messaging across thousands of Facebook accounts and hundreds of pages. And, and do you know that millions of people's Facebook were uh, hacked, including mine? And uh, because I got a letter from Facebook. And um, so this this is super serious because it says human rights groups fear the treaty, which is entering its final stage of negotiation at New York next week, will intensify police surveillance powers across borders by providing dictatorships with further tools of repression and criminalizing online speech. This is what I'm talking about. When they accuse you of hate speech, hate conduct, they are targeting you with a false accusation, and you can find yourself having to defend yourself. Um, Sure. The rules could resolve certain online safety concerns while blowing up the floodgates on others. And uh, I find it so serious and so scary and dangerous, and I always have, that they have allowed fact checkers who you hire just like maybe out of school or whatever, who have no lifetime experience in law enforcement or what a crime is and no authority over your uh, accusing you of a crime, uh, because hate is a hate speech crime in America that Obama implemented with Congress back then, and it doesn't protect, it only protects the Muslims and the gays, but it doesn't protect anyone else from being accused of a crime by them, and they can call the police and report you. Well, this is similar to yes. what that was. Well, yeah, hate, hate speech to the, the left is anything they don't like. They classify that right. as hate speech. Just, just like the teachers' unions and school boards today quantify hate speech as parents wanting to see what the curriculum is and parents demanding to know if their children are trying to transition to another sex. Uh, teachers, uh, teachers' unions and school boards classify that as hate speech. That is point. so... Oh, it is just so insane because that means that we have a lot of communist influence or fascism influence in this nation. And and it's that's a very, very serious because that's making the constitution meaningless because they're ignoring that and they're they're following these ideologies that yes. do not belong in the United States of America. Euros, you're exactly right. And, you know, this the hate speech thing and censorship uh, is being practiced uh, by the uh, LBGTQ or the alphabet community. Um, for example, the previous the alphabet community it used to be called the alphabet movement where they had a legitimate agenda of trying to get marriage rights and uh, lack of uh, discrimination rights for uh, people, you know, the LBG community. Well, sadly, that that movement has been hijacked, and by the tra- radical trans people, who are now moved that converted the L- legitimate LBGT um, uh, movement into an LBGT mob, and they are the most intolerant uh, people you'll ever want to meet. They they refuse to acknowledge another point of view. They punish and cancel anyone that they don't like. They want to control language. They deconstruct language. They want to cancel you if you don't object, if you don't agree with them 100%. If you don't use the right pronoun, they'll have you arrested or kicked out of school. That's an example of loss of freedom of speech uh, implemented by the current version of the LBGT community who have been taken over by the radical trans community. 
Uh, and of course, even in California, our great state, two radical trans uh, uh, representatives introduced a bill last month that will take custody away from parents if their parents question or object to their child wanting to transition to another uh, sex. Imagine that. They're introducing a bill in California to make it illegal for parents to keep their children if the parents don't automatically support the child's uh, transition. That's the ultimate goal of the radical trans mob. Another example of losing free speech. That's because the United Nations is involved, and the United Nations are trying to privatize the United Nations with who will have organizations who, um, and take over entire health care industry uh, of the world so that if they say, oh, there's a, there's a virus and we're going to lock down the world on a split second like they did in 2019, you can't go to work, you can't go to school, I don't care if you're healthy, uh, you, can't, you can't do anything without our permission. This is not Americanism. That is not Americanism. Uh, flus are nope. flus, and uh, anybody can die from the flu. 550,000 Americans die every year from the flu, some type of respiratory ailment. And so they're all uh, very difficult to, to discern which flu it is because they all have about the same symptoms. Every doctor will tell you that. And so uh, it's very, very easy to call a flu out because um, 550,000 people every year die from a flu anyway because it develops into pneumonia, and uh, then they need mm-hmm. ventilators. And all that. So it's the same process that happens every single year. It also says that the campaign dubbed Spamiflage was held by covert users who garnered more than a half a million followers across 50 online forums and social media sites, including the company formerly known as Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, as well as Medium and Meta-owned forum platforms such as Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram. The Sun newspaper says, we assess Spamiflage to be the largest known cross-platform covert influence operation to date, released uh, Tuesday, uh, uh, they state, was released on Tuesday, managed by Chinese governmental agents, but linked... um, It was managed and but linked to clusters of similar campaigns promoting Chinese interests, which the tech giant has been removing since 2019 under its inauthentic behavior policy. Um, So these people tried to uh, control their, conceal their identities and um, coordination and or um, according to their investigation. Uh, But they did find, it says, links to individuals associated with Chinese law enforcement. And that was from Meta Researchers. So it says... Let me give you another another example of how corrupt and dangerous the Chinese are. In California, up in near Sacramento area, agents found a secret Chinese biotech lab site where they were uh, infecting hundreds of mice and other um, test animals uh, with uh, various strains of flu viruses essentially doing the things that a secret biotech lab would do without knowledge of the local community. And they finally found it by accident. And of course, the the people who uh, own the facility have yet to be found or arrested, et cetera. It's an example of how blatant the Chinese are doing uh, act, uh, activities are here in America and, of course, places we don't even know about yet. Very dangerous. I can't even understand how the United States federal government and state governments can allow and stand by and allow the sale of our homeland, which the American people own, our farms, our right. water rights. And, and our international waters and our sovereignty, our borders that they are paid to secure, how they can stand by and sell out our land, our homeland, without any constitutional authority or job duties 
which they were elected to do. The president only has five job duties, and one of them is not to make deals with foreign enemy nations and sell out our land. And that I, I know why, because, because they're too amazing. busy. They're, they're, they're too busy investigating Trump. They don't have enough time to uh, stop the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> They got well, to they gotta, they gotta go have. They got to spend all their resources uh, investigating Trump. Um, uh, no time to investigate the Chinese. No time to investigate the Chinese or the illegals that are pouring into our country. Oh yeah. my God! No, no time. Uh, no time. I, I agree. You know they need our lower taxes to to continue on with their program. Well, anyway, it has been such a pleasure to speak with you again. We'll have to do it again because the time flies every time I talk to you. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just tell the audience about your website or your ebooks really sure. quickly. Well, thank you. Thank you again. Uh, again, my name is Harold Hervey. I, I write under the nom de plume New Centurion. Uh, SPQA. SPQA is an old Roman uh, acronym, means for the, well, it used to be SPQR. I converted it to SPQA. SPQR is uh, for the Senate and People of Rome, and I add it for the Senate People of America. And I write a hard hitting, compelling blog post uh, under New Centurion on Substack, S U B S T A C K dot com. I have a series of uh, articles, uh, essays, uh, I think uh, you people will like them. Uh, people consider me a poor man's version of Ann Coulter. I'm pretty hard hitting and irreverent. And I just published my latest uh, article about CRT, uh, how it's a tragedy, and that how Ron DeSantis is the only one who's willing to fight against CRT and wokeism. Um, thank you again for everything. I look forward to uh, the next time we speak. Wonderful. You have a blessed day, and we'll talk again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rose. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye. And that's all we have time for, folks. I hope you got um, some information of empowerment, enlightenment, and food for thought, and that you will do your own homework, your own research, and come up with your own discernment. Uh, remember, nothing said on Colombo Chronicles is intended to be legal, medical, political, or financial advice, but a dissemination of information for educational and entertainment purposes only. God bless you. God bless America. Until next Wednesday, God willing, um, we'll talk to the Rose again because you are never alone when you talk to the Rose. Obamasaurus, the new book by Rose M. Colombo, is an updated version of a political satire that reflects the political roadmap of today's world, written with an Orwellian twist. Will humanity survive or suffer depopulation or extinction? Obamasaurus by Rose M. Colombo, available at Amazon.com. Well, my friends, time flies. And now is the time to say goodbye. Thanks so much for being part of the Colombo Chronicles family. You are appreciated. Please do it now. Bookmark. Push that like, share, and follow button. Oh, and don't forget to comment below and stay in touch. Make your family part of the Colombo family. Until next Wednesday at noon, remember, God loves you, and so does the Rose.